This is Sean Allen and it's January 2012 and I wanted to do a short video presentation which would summarise some of the conversations I've had with a whole series of business owners, specifically in the martial arts industry, just over the last month and looking through to the next year. And it enables them to be able to get a greater control over their business and also ensure that their employees have a similar sort of attitude. And I've entitled it, How Business Works. Let me start by using a, uh, the blackboard or the whiteboard just behind me. When the business owner first started working on their business and even the thought generated in their mind all those years ago, and Michael Gerber calls this the technician having an entrepreneurial seizure, we found that the whole idea of the S meaning the strategy of how things are going to work in their business, the types of result that they would want when they created their business was, was very clear in the owner's eyes. And from there, after that seizure took place, they started the, the operations of the business, which is the day-to-day -day method of how they would deliver the service, what they would do with their customers, how they would buy their product or whatever it might be. And in terms of a martial arts sense, it's the classes. It's whether you teach punches or kicks first or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Karate or whatever type of product it is, the operations on a daily basis was a large part of what consumed the owner. And of course, the owner would think, well, hang on, I need some students. So I had better... I'll put it over here, do some marketing. So they focused their efforts and intentions on the marketing also. So it was sort of equally distributed between market between marketing and getting the day-to-day -day efforts to create a larger business. So that goes on for quite some time, but the important thing to know is that constantly in the owner's mind was this idea up here. It was very clear to the owner exactly what it was they had in mind as a result of all of this effort in their business. And they spend a lot of time. And unfortunately, towards the end, this area over here, which is, and I'll put it in little letters just here, the finances becomes a bit of a problem. So for us to create a balanced approach to the business, we need to ensure that all of these things, the marketing, the day-to-day -day operations of the business, and the finances are taken care of. The problem is when the owner grows the business to a certain size and has an employee, be it part-time or full-time, or a volunteer working for them. So they create someone down here. So this person here, starts working part of the operation for them. This person here will never have this bright idea of running their own business, otherwise they would be out there doing their own business. So this person here starts getting paid dollars for part of the operation. And this is the reason why if a businessman, if a business owner doesn't translate the original idea of the product through to his employees that there becomes problems. Because the employee, let's imagine the employee has three jobs to do. And obviously it's going to be more, but let's imagine they have three jobs to do. So these three jobs the employee has to do every single day. Now let's imagine that something happens within the operation and this is what the general population expects the business to do. An opportunity, and I'll put number four over there, arises where a person might have an extra need that might have to be filled. The new employee is just doing their job by performing jobs numbers one, two, and three. The customer has a need which could be number four. The owner, because the owner understands what the original idea of the business was, the owner would understand that, hey, let's just, this is an opportunity to step above and beyond, to go the extra mile. So the owner would think, well, you should do number four. The employee is just thinking, well, I'm being paid to do numbers one, two, and three. This is where the problem lies. 
because the employee doesn't see this. To help the owner create systems that serve the original idea and to help the owner enable the employees to serve the original idea, this idea must become transparent. Now, the idea of, for example, a martial arts academy is obviously to teach self-defense, is obviously to make people confident, or it might be whatever idea germinated in the brain of the owner when they first started the business. That idea must take the form of video, audio, pictures, written words, a whole series of things if the employees are to act above and beyond the call of duty when that need arises. That point, that point is will arise and the owner will be able to remove him or self from the business, not totally, but to a degree, and rely on the fact that the employees are going to act with the similar care factor of the owner in his absence. The last thing an owner and I, the reason for me being able to stand in front of this camera and explain this is I have spent 20 years with employees initially in the early days who only had a limited care factor. Later on as I explained the whole reason we were in business and the types of results that I wanted to get from us performing our duties on a daily basis from our operation and I had my employees focused on the results and I would explain to them, hey, your job is one, two and three, but this is the result I want. That's where I started to be able to withdraw from the business because when you get over 100 students, when you get over 200 students, 300, 400 students, you can't teach them all, you can't be there every hour of the of the opening time of the, of the business. So I found that when I made this clear, when I verbalised my overall, my strategy to my employees, I found that once this was clear, they acted with this idea and this strategy in mind. Sure, they went through their checklist of duties and performed their jobs, but they knew that they and I were both responsible for our and their results. Let me finish by reading you something that I just got in a, uh, a daily blog that's sent to me and it's written by Seth Godin and it illustrates another aspect of what I'm just talking about. So the blog by Seth Godin starts with the title, Who Cares? And the content reads, Unless someone does, things start to fray around the edges. Often it's the CEO or the manager who sets a standard of caring about the details. Even better is a culture where everyone cares and where each person reinforces that horizontally throughout the team. You've probably been to the hotel that serves refrigerated tomatoes in January at their $20 breakfast that doesn't answer the phone when you call the front desk, that has a shower curtain that is falling off the rack and has a, has a slightly narky concierge. This is in sharp relief to the hotel, possibly just down the street, the one that costs just the same but gets the details right. It's obviously not about access to capital, doing it right doesn't cost that much more, it's about caring enough to make an effort. If we define good enough sufficiently low, we'll probably meet our standards. Caring involves raising that bar to the point where the team has to stretch. Of course, the manager of the mediocre hotel that's reading this, the staff member of the mediocre restaurant that just got forwarded this note, they have a great excuse. Times are tough. Money is tight. The team wasn't hired by me. Nobody else cares. I'm only going to be doing this gig for a year. Our customers are jerks. Who cares? Caring, it turns out, is a competitive advantage and one that takes effort, not money. Like most things that are worth doing, it's not easy at first and the one who cares isn't going to get a standing ovation from those that are merely phoning it in. I think it's this lack of early positive feedback that makes caring in service businesses so rare, which is precisely what makes it valuable.